was developed and this has also been shared through WHO with member states. This has facilitated the ability of many countries, including here in the Philippines, to conduct locally diagnostic tests. Um, WHO has been closely monitoring the evolving of this outbreak um, and has been concerned about the emergence of this new pathogen. Because of this concern, our Director General summoned the Emergency Committee of the International Health Regulations on the 22nd of January uh, whether to consider the evidence and decide whether this needs to be this event needs to be classified as a public health emergency of international concern. The committee could not reach a consensus on the 22nd and was reconvened on the 23rd. And they decided that based on currently available, available evidence on the 23rd, uh, it did not warrant to be classified as a public health emergency of international concern. However, the committee, uh, at the request of the DG, uh, expressed their willingness to reconvene at short notice. And based on further emerging evidence, the committee was reconvened on the 31st of January. And at these deliberations, based on new evidence that had emerged since the 23rd of January, the emergency of committee of the International Health Regulations, a panel consisting of experts, international experts, independent international experts, recommended to WHO the classification of this event as a public health emergency of international concern. Uh, let me clarify what that would mean. Uh, the cl class classification of the event as a public health international uh, emergency of international concern provides WHO the opportunity to better coordinate an international response, mobilizing uh, resources of all member states to address this challenge. Uh, the committee and WHO continues to believe that this outbreak can be controlled and the spread of the virus can be stopped. WHO is working together with member states to strengthen their preparedness capacities to improve their ability to deal with possible or likely importations of cases and to better manage those cases. Uh, WHO commends the actions taken by the Filipino government to strengthen its preparedness uh, to build capacity to detect cases, and WHO continues to work together with the Department of Health Philippines and the Filipino government to increase its preparedness and response capacities to deal with this outbreak. We remain confident that the outbreak can be controlled and we can prevent uh, expanded spread of this disease. Uh, to date, uh, there have been more than 17,000 cases reported. The vast majority of the cases continue to be reported from the People's Republic of China. Um, the, the outbreak has also unfortunately resulted in the death of 362 people, uh, all of them in the People's Republic of China, excluding the one death which happened on Saturday here in the Philippines. The disease has now been reported from 23 countries, several of those countries also reporting local transmission, although most of the cases that those countries have reported had a travel history to uh, affected areas in Hubei province, particularly to Wuhan. Um, WHO reiterates that WHO has made available and is mobilizing all resources in its capacity at country office level in the region and globally to address this uh, emergency of international concern. And we will continue to work with the Department of Health Philippines and the government of the Philippines to increase your preparedness and response capacities. WHO is confident that at this point of time, there is no community spread of the disease as 
per evidence that is currently available within the Philippines. We want to reiterate that the two cases that have been reported here in the Philippines were both from travelers who originated from Wuhan, who actually traveled with early signs of the disease. So uh, we commend the government of the Philippines for the measures it's implementing, and we work in partnership with them to strengthen their response capacities. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Rabi Abayasing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Celia Carlos, uh, Yusek Ernia Belia, and uh, uh, Bureau of Immigration spokesperson Dana Sandoval. I turn over to Undersecretary Rock Ignacio for the press conference. Okay. Question. Raymond Tinasa, then Mela. Uh, good noon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Secretary Andanar Siguro. Uh, now, yung papatuparin o pagpatupad ng uh, temporary travel ban, uh, kasama ba dito ang, for example, yung mga, may concern kasi yung mga doctors from US who are planning to travel for a medical mission sa Gimaras. Nagtanong sila kung kasama ba sila kasi meron silang layover or stopover sa Hong Kong and mainland China. Then back, then to Manila. Kung kasama ba sila sa uh, ban sa entry ng sa Pilipinas? Um, if, they, uh, if they are part of the delegation po for of hello there. Um, if they are part of the delegation of the WHO and government efforts in combating the virus, then they will be allowed to enter the Philippines. No, I mean uh, not necessarily uh, part of the delegation of the WHO, but uh, only doctors, uh, regular doctors from US who are traveling to the Philippines but they have a layover or stopover in Hong Kong and China. So they are part of the affected to be banned, barred entry. Um, Doon po sa directive na natanggap natin from the Office of the President, all Filipino nationals po. So uh, lahat po ng dadating na Filipino are um, subjected to the assessment of the Bureau of Quarantine. They will also not be allowed to depart the country. The Yung not necessarily Filipino nationals, uh, say U.S. nationals or uh, European nationals who are coming to the Philippines, but they have a scheduled layover mm -hmm. or stopover for four to five hours in the airport, then flight to Manila. Even transiting passengers po, basta bumaba po ng Hong Kong, mag layover po sa Hong Kong, mag transit, they will still not be allowed to depart, uh, to enter the Philippines. Kay Under Secretary Abelia, sir, now that... Uh, umiiral na yung uh, temporary travel ban and our local aircraft or airplanes, PAL and Cebu Pacific, already cancelled or suspended flights to and fro from any, from China to their SARS. Uh, ano yung magiging arrangement for yung aircraft nila? For example, from Wuhan or from Hong Kong or from ano, kung wala naman ng bibiyahing airline? Uh, may katulad nung uh, report kang ina, uh, Inaaregla ng gobyerno natin na may mapadala tayong aircraft na patungo okay. sa, sa, doon sa affected areas na yon. So, uh, ang expected po ay uh, sometime this week. Yun ang target date ma makarating doon para i-ferry back yung mga, yung mga nag-volunteer na magpaparipate. Thank you. Okay, Mela, then Maricel and Saliman. Uh, for Ms. Dan of Bureau of Immigration. Hi, ma'am. Uh, I know it was already mentioned earlier, but just to reiterate, since there are so many criticisms, it was January 31 when WHO declared the 2019 NCOVARD as a public health emergency of international concern. Prior to this declaration, do you think the Bureau of Immigration make necessary or enough actions to quell the spread of the contagion? Um, yes po, we believe so po kasi we work with the recommendations of the Department of Health and um, we cannot implement policy changes with regards to travel ban unless directed by the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Office of the President. So lahat po yan, um, we take into consideration the uh, recommendations of the Department of Health which is based on the uh, uh, recommendations of the World Health Organization. And... Uh 
last one question na lang, ma'am. Uh, China declared human-to-human -human transmission of the NCOV on January 20. Then Singapore, with 13 confirmed cases of NCOV, banned travelers with recent visit to China on January 20, 31. The Philippines, with two confirmed cases, made a similar ban on February 2. For BI, uh, do you think government response is just right or is it late as alleged by some critics? Um, we believe po that it's just right kasi naka like I said earlier po nakaangkla po tayo on the recommendations of the World Health Organization and um, ang ating Department of Health is um, equipped in uh, assessing the situation and the needs of our country kung kailangan po natin ng travel ban. So yung naging response po natin is appropriate naman with the recommendations of the World Health Organization. Okay, thank you. Ma Maricel? Um, Yusek Abelia or Secretary Endenar, good morning. Sir, what will happen to um, those OFWs who are just here in the Philippines for uh, vacation? Will they be allowed to go back? Temporarily po, due to the travel ban, hindi po muna um, because wala pong distinction between visa types dun sa lumabas po na direktiba dun sa travel ban. So lahat po ng Filipino nationals who are in the country will not be allowed to depart for the uh, Hong Kong, uh, China, and Macau. But given that situation, since yun po kasi yung source of income nila, of course, so I understand some of them are are concerned what will happen to their jobs in China or in Hong Kong or in Macau. What's what's the plan of the government for these OFWs? Um, we fully understand po because eh, kung yun ang talagang kinabubuhay nila. But I, I believe po the POEA and the OWA will be doing their part po in, in ensuring na itong mga trabaho po nitong mga ating kababayan abroad ay mananatili despite this travel ban. Ma'am, just a clarification on the quarantine of Filipinos who are coming back here. Paano po yung magiging procedure nun dun sa mandatory quarantine? Talagang self Quarantine lang yung gagawin sa kanila. Um, it might be best po for the Bureau of Quarantine to answer this question because um, they are the ones po who are um, implementing the quarantine. Uh, in immigration po, we process the documents of the person and the person itself. But when it comes to health matters upon arrival, it's really the Bureau of Quarantine. Okay, thank you Okay, po. Salima. Hi, um, to Dr. Rabi of the WHO. Sir, can we just get your the reaction of the WHO to news coming from Thailand that a certain cocktail of antivirals used to treat uh, flu and um, HIV is uh, used to treat NCOV patients and apparently there's one who um, had a dramatic improvement. Um, what do you know about this? Thank you for the question. We've seen media reports of this. As you know, the declaration of a public health emergency of international concern also encourages research into better managing patients and looking for treatments and preventive interventions such as vaccines. So we encourage uh, evidence-driven efforts in that uh, direction. We've seen reports coming from Thailand, uh, of course, the improvement of one patient does not constitute evidence. WHO will work more closely with the authorities in Thailand, but also we are continuing to work with the authorities in China and with other research institutions to build evidence of what practices should be adopted by affected countries to improve case management, to prevent the transmission, uh, and uh, no sooner there is clear evidence of what works, WHO will share that. In the meantime, WHO has shared interim guidance with member states on how to prevent and control infection, how to manage cases, and how to do diagnosis of suspected patients through lab testing. So we need to recognize that this is an evolving situation. It's a new disease. And WHO remains committed to working together with the global research community to generate that evidence and share it with member states when available. Okay. Um, sir, uh, right now what we know is that transmission is through droplets, um, uh, respiratory. But um, in the US, I understand there was a, a patient uh, where they found the virus in the stool sample. Um, 
what do you know about this and uh, is this alarming? So we know that uh, the virus will be contained in body fluids and uh, usually it being a respiratory disease, the commonest mechanism of transmission from symptomatic individuals is through sneezing and coughing when droplets containing the virus are either absorbed by somebody in close proximity or uh, rest on some surface which then becomes a fomite, an infected surface, uh, the touching of which could help transmit the disease to somebody else because you touch where the place where the virus is and then touch your eyes or nose or mouth and the virus can enter you. So that's the common mode of transmission. But it's not unknown that uh, coronaviruses can cause intestinal side effects. And so reports that uh, viruses are contained in the feces are not entirely unexpected. But we do believe that that's not the primary mode of transmission of this outbreak. The, the reports of uh, the presence and possible implications for its transmission through fecal oral routes are being investigated but not as yet confirmed by WHO. Okay. Um, to Dr. Carlos and maybe uh, Secretary Andanar, um, given na wala pa naman po talaga na kumakalat sa mga Pilipino, wala pa pong community spread ito pong NCOV, pero yun nga po that um, posible pa rin naman na through uh, fecal uh, matter kumalat yung mga ganito pong klaseng viruses. Um, how, uh, how are you reacting to this? Kasi nga, given na maraming Pilipino po, ang wala pong mga sarili po nila mga toilets. Um, first, firstly, there are other coronaviruses previously identified like MERS-CoV in which there was proven um, a virus excretion through the feces. So it may not be surprising that the same thing will be later evident from the novel coronavirus. So what do we do? We need to strengthen um, um, advice to the public to practice oral um, and proper food hygiene, to wash their hands uh, well before and after eating, before and after using the toilet, which is not really common. <laughs> because we see many, many uh, Filipinos using uh, the, the toilets without washing their hands before and after. So we need to strengthen that uh, information. And um, we need to be careful about disposal of uh, feces. Uh, they should be properly uh, contained and uh, put in the proper waste disposal bins, especially for areas where there are no uh, established sewage systems. So I, I think for now, those are the recommendations, especially in areas where there are no established uh, sewage systems. Secretary Andenar, uh, would you know po if meron tayong quarantine facility na uh, in, uh, sabi nila magsaysay or in Cabalio Island, um, ano po ba yung balak po gawin doon? Lalo na po sa mga babalik po ng mga Pilipino from uh, those countries po. Ang uh, sinabi po ni Secretary Duque is um, they're considering uh, Fort Magsaysay kasi nga sa laki ng facility at uh, pwedeng i-quarantine doon kahit na ilang ilang uh, daan o libong pasyente 10,000 yung ano yung uh, actually uh, capacity ng uh, Fort Magsaysay. Uh, as, pero yung sa Visayas and sa Mindanao bukod dun sa mga ospital ng ating uh, Department of Health uh, wala pang nababanggit sa akin si uh, Secretary Duque kung saan ni ano kung saan ni quarantine yung mga possible uh, carriers nitong NCOV. Uh, but later on, we have uh, an emergency meeting with the President and after that, we will have a press conference so uh, baka pwedeng itanong mo ulit dun sa... Uh, merong, merong dagdag po si uh, Dr. Carlos. In the interagency meeting last Friday, the plan was for a team uh, from the DOH, from uh, quarantine, from immigration, DFA, to visit the prospective facilities. That includes Fort Magsaysay. So depending on the findings, uh, the decision will be made on where to quarantine the returning Filipinos. Pero po, nagsimula na po silang bumalik. Uh, kahapon po tayo nag-start nung atin pong issue ng temporary ban. So syempre po yung mga 
uh, nakabalik po mga Pilipino, although alam nila may self-quarantine, hindi po nila alam kung saan sila pupunta, kung ano po ang gagawin. Uh, hindi po kasi malinaw yon sa public na, kunwari ako po, dumating ako, babalik po ako sa pamilya ko, at uh, sasakay po ako ng bus, sasakay ako ng taxi. So, yung ganun pong um, pag-aalala, paano po ba natin yun uh, makokontrol? Uh, so far, uh, ulitin ko lang po yung sinabi natin kanina na yung ano yung proposal po yung yung, yung wala pa pong nabalik mula sa Wuhan at sa Hubei province. Pero po sir yung mga galing China, Hong Kong, Macau, syempre po syempre po kabado po sila ngayon. Uh, bumalik po sila kahapon. So uh, ano po yung instructions natin sa kanila? Yung Paano po tayo magse-self quarantine? Paano po yung proseso? the decision tool earlier in my presentation and there's a part there where uh, if uh, personnel returning from China have no symptoms, no fever, no respiratory symptoms, just a history of travel, they need to do self-monitoring at home. So uh, they stay at home, uh, preferably separated from the rest of the household. If they can stay in a separate room, that's much better. They are advised to wear masks. Uh, for around 14 days from from arrival from the date of arrival uh, until they complete the two weeks if they have no symptoms then that's it but if they develop symptoms they are advised to go to a facility which can evaluate them so that's the general instruction okay thank you salima can we have and, and sorry to monitor their temperature twice a day okay can we have our friend from please take your name microphone please Hello, I'm Sara Gomez from International News Agency FM. Uh, my question is for Bureau of Immigration. Um, I would like to confirm some reports I've read this morning about that some hundreds of foreigners, including 300 Chinese nationals, stranded in the airports. I don't know if all of them are in Naya. Uh, apparently, in, right now, they, they weren't allowed to mm -hmm. get into the Philippines, but now they can leave because there are no flights available. Mm -hmm. can, we know, can we confirm that figures and to know what, what would happen to them? Um, yes, that's true. There are around 300 Chinese nationals who are stranded in Naia because um, most of the airlines have canceled their flights already to and from the different parts of China. But uh, our office is coordinating with uh, uh, the Chinese embassy and they have pledged to, to send an aircraft to fetch their uh, uh, citizens who are uh, stranded in the country. And um, maybe today or in the next few days, we'll find out the details of this um, uh, uh, flights that the Chinese embassy will be arranging. And where are they now? Um, currently, they're still in the There's yes. a specific area in yes. the airport? They are only Chinese or there are also foreigners from other... Um, there are also other foreign nationals, but most of the ones that were um, stranded since yesterday have already departed. Okay. Uh, and I have another question for Undersecretary Abella. Can we know... I don't know if... Can we know... Uh, when can we expect the arrival of the Filipinos uh, repatriated from China? And I don't know if you have uh, an idea of how many of them will be a, already yes. request to be repatriated to the Philippines. All right. Uh, as of an hour ago, um, 45 minutes ago, uh, we, have found, we found out that about 40 Filipinos have already requested to be repatriated. Uh, the, the expected uh, goal is to be able to uh, uh, fetch them within the week. That is the intended goal. So, Sorry, 40? 40, 40, yes. Thank you. From uh, uh, Wuhan, uh, Hubei province, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, choose the new. Kay Ma'am Dana po. Hi, Ma'am. Uh, nababanggit po kanina mayroon ng 23 countries na affected ng coronavirus. Uh, pero nakakonsentrate lang po tayo ng travel ban sa China, Macau, at saka Hong Kong. Yung iba bang bansa na affected na rin ito, like Taiwan, for example, Malaysia, mayroon na rin recorded, Singapore, wala ba tayong i-impose din na travel ba ban dyan sa mga, safe ba tayo sa mga dumarating na citizens nila or other nationality coming from that countries papunta rito sa Pilipinas or tayo naman ipupunta din sa kanila? 
Siguro po kung may changes in policy dito sa ating travel bans, if if um, there there is a need to expand it, it will be recommended po by the Department of Health and the World Health Organization. Yeah, Ay, ang concern lang ma'am is baka masyado tayong nakakonsentrate sa China, Macau at Hong Kong, baka malusutan naman tayo dito sa iba pang other countries na affected na rin pala nitong coronavirus. Yes po, we believe naman po that the capacities of our Department of Health, also the World Health Organization, is enough naman po to guide the, the President and our uh, other government agencies in crafting changes in the policies po dito sa travel ban. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Francis, microphone please. Good morning po. Uh, uh, sirs, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, check and dinner. Tanong ko lang, uh, nagkaroon po ng komento si Vice President Lenny Robredo about sa hindi raw maayos sa pagbibigay ng impormasyon ni uh, uh, ni Secretary Panelo about the coronavirus. Ngayon, in-encourage na si Presidente Duterte na as the head of the government na siya po ang lamabas sa publiko uh, magbigay ng update para at least ang mga tao po eh mas ma mapanatag sa nangyayari ngayon sa 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 atin sa so, with regards to sa virus po ano pong komento ng palasyo doon sir We respect the suggestion of the vice president Mamaya meron tayong meron tayong emergency meeting with the president at exactly pag-uusapan itong uh, 2019 N coronavirus then after which there's a press con so you may ask the president uh, later on. Thank you. Okay. Rosalie Daniello. Good morning po. Kay Ms. Dana po. Ma'am, uh, may exceptions po ba dun sa travel ban? For example, meron pong nakascheduled na operation sa, any, sa China or kaya sa Macau and Hong Kong and pati po ba yung mga diplomatic personnel ay exempted dun sa travel ban to China? Yung mga Filipinos po that would be uh, departing the country, wala pong exemptions na nakalagay doon. But of course, for such reasons po, if there is a re really a health emergency, uh, maaari po siguro through the recommendations of the Department of Health then. Um, kasama din po yung isa pong question na, na nag emerge yung mga dual citizens, kung maaari po ba silang umalis ng bansa, given that they are both Filipino and foreign nationals. Um, sa atin po, uh, we allow the departure po upon presentation of the foreign passport. Pwede rin po bang makuha yung bilang kung ilan na po yung hindi po pinayagan na makapasok ng bansa? Mga Chinese and foreign nationals na nanggaling sa China and other special administrative regions. Sa ngayon po, we are still collating the figure kasi the directive just happened yesterday uh, uh, morning. So, kinokolekta pa po natin yung figures. But perhaps in the next few days po, we will be able to give you a more concrete number. Last na lang po. Uh, I-clarify ko lang po yung naging statement nyo kanina dun sa mga OFW na hindi makakabalik dahil sa travel ban. So ang OWA ang magbibigay ng assistance. What particular at assistance po? Um, siguro po, uh, coordination with their agencies para po maprotektahan yung kanilang trabaho bago pa po sila um, pumakabalik sa bansa. Given the situation, I'm sure um, everyone understands that each country has been conducting their own um, restrictions when it comes to travel because of the, dito nga sa kumakalat na sakit na ito. So I'm sure that people will understand that, this, uh, that we are doing this, the government is doing this for the protection of everybody. Okay, Ms. Yellow, then Pia and Ace. Um, morning. Um, Yellow from China Central Television. I, I have a question to Secretary Andanar. Um, because yesterday I saw a post by uh, Ambassador uh, Chito Romana in his Facebook and he posted a song written by Filipinos living in Wuhan. And this, in this song, these people said, uh, I hope I pronounce it right, Bangong Wuhan Dayong Makasama Sama, Bangong Wuhan Dayong Makagaisa. So uh, this kind of song encourage people in Wuhan and uh, all around China very much. So I would like to know from the Philippine government, do we have any encourage messengers to, uh, me message to uh, Chinese people and uh, uh, especially to this uh, Filipino who choose uh, live in Wuhan? Thank you. Thank you for that question. In fact, I have uh, seen uh, several videos online of um, uh, Chinese people chanting that uh, specific song that you were saying. 
Uh, yesterday we did a release a statement against uh, discrimination, that we should not discriminate um, people, especially Chinese, who are affected by this end coronavirus. Uh, this is not the trait of the Filipino. It should never be the trait of a Filipino. Um, and we did mention also that uh, there were several times or numerous times that we were in need and uh, countries around us like Singapore, Malaysia, China, uh, even the Americas in, the, in, the, in Europe were there for us. So we should be also there for the Chinese people who are suffering this uh, end corona virus in prayer and also in support. There should be no room for uh, discrimination. I will be uh, asked, do you have, do you have a, a, an answer for that? Okay, so later on I have a meeting with the president and we will uh, ask the president uh, what his message is to the Chinese people. Thank you. Thank you. I have another question to uh, Dr. Rabinja from WHO. Um, you just mentioned that uh, uh, all the states need to work together to prevent this kind of transmission of the virus. So I would like to know some comments from you about how do you see Chinese government's uh, um, actions like uh, they lock down quite a lot of cities to prevent the spread of the virus and uh, 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 like uh, we uh, Chinese government built a hospital in 88 eight days to uh, can contain a lot of people uh, there so I would like to know from uh, the WHO side thank you thank you for the question WHO acknowledges the proactive role that China has played right from the beginning of this outbreak uh, transparently sharing information as it becomes available sharing knowledge the identification of the pathogen per se uh, defining its whole genome sequence sharing that and sharing diagnostics also sharing information about the clinical presentations, the manifestations and how the patients are managed. All of that has been valuable in helping WHO better understand this disease. So as our Director General mentioned, uh, when he met Professor, uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, we are very appreciative of those efforts of uh, the Chinese government. Uh, we also are encouraged by the measures China is implementing to contain this outbreak both in Wuhan and Hubei and within China but also from spreading to other countries. WHO acknowledges and is monitoring closely China's efforts to lock down approximately 50 million people now to contain this outbreak. As uh, WHO has mentioned, this is unprecedented in global public health and we are closely looking at its effectiveness and what its relevance would be for f future global efforts in containing these kinds of epidemics. Uh, we also appreciate the early uh, efforts implemented by the government of China in implementing uh, a travel ban for tour groups uh, to travel abroad and in early implementation of exit screening to screen patients leaving China. These are important uh, experiences that WHO is trying to understand and see what is replicable and good so that we can learn from these experiences on their potential usefulness. And we continue to work both on the ground in China with your specialists to better understand what is necessary to control this disease and to help control the disease in China. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, last question uh, to anyone who can answer it, because uh, uh, we just mentioned in the press conference that uh, there's no local transmission here in the Philippines yet. Um, but uh, what the government prepared to do uh, to in case this uh, uh, outbreak will happen in the Philippines, because uh, maybe we will face some shortage of the equipment like face masks and especially like uh, the, the uh, doctors and the uh, nurses in the hospital, their equipment may be uh, face a shortage. So I would like to know how the government will do in face this. Based on our recent meetings in the Department of Health, uh, as early as uh, now, there are efforts to procure huge amounts of personal protective equipment. 
uh, not only from local sources but even from international sources uh, in anticipation of a possible wider spread of this um, coronavirus. And of course, we are still at the containment phase, which means there's no community transmission. That's why a, a huge amount of effort is currently being implemented to identify possible uh, people who may transmit the disease. As you know, there is contact tracing of the uh, persons who, who were found to be positive, and that's not a small amount of effort. You identify all the possible uh, contacts of that patient, you, you assess their health condition, you treat them, or you, you quarantine them if necessary. So uh, those are really very um, huge uh, measures being undertaken to avoid that the transition of the country from simple containment to mitigation. So hopefully we will not reach that particular stage. Okay, we still have, thank you. Yeah, we still have Pia, Ace, Mikael, Chona, and Alvin. Okay, Dr. Carlos Po, as a follow-up to the question of Ms. Yellow, you, you mentioned a while ago that the RITM is uh, preparing for a possible surge of uh, uh, people that you need to, um, to check whether they have the coronavirus. Could you tell us more about your preparations, Ma'am? Um, we have um, a surge capacity plan uh, for training subnational laboratories to be able to do the test. But since... Uh, we just acquired the technology fairly recently and started testing Thursday last week. Uh, we may need to, you know, first make an assessment of five subnational laboratories previously identified. In fact, we have been training them for influenza surveillance since almost five years ago. And the test for coronavirus uses the same uh, test format. So it will not be difficult. Uh, we just have different reagents and different primers. So we, are, uh, we have that plan, and in the last uh, command conference of the DOH, there were already measures laid out on how they can be uh, capa provided capacity to do the test. So in the future, ma'am, we may be able to activate five more laboratories for the testing? Yes. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, follow-up lang din po dun sa, uh, or just to clarify yung uh, nabanggit nyo po kanina, the returning uh, Filipinos from China, if they do not manifest any symptoms, ang meron lang sila is the travel history to China, they can self-quarantine. But what about those coming from uh, Hubei province or Wuhan po? I think the same uh, recommendations hold. Uh, the decision tree is clear. If you have no symptoms, you just have an exposure to, you know, uh, by travel, then you can uh, do just self-quarantine. Can you miss that? Uh, Ma'am, ito po, uh, that's being, uh, is that being explained in depth dun sa mga bumabalik po na Filipinos from China? Um, yes po, uh, we are in close coordination of, with the Bureau of Quarantine who does the explanation po when it comes to the uh, quaran uh, pagka-quarantine po nitong mga dumadating natin na OFWs. So they are advised po kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin. And then um, sila din po yung nagsasabi kung ano yung step-by-step step na dapat gawin at kung saan po magre-report kung sakali pong makaramdam ng any symptoms of um, the coronavirus. Ma'am, ano pong ginagawang basis ng Bureau of Immigration to verify kung totoo yung sinasabi na travel history ng isang taon? Passports po. Makikita po yan sa passports kasi kasama po dito sa travel ban is not just yung pinanggalingan niya but the uh, travel history within the last 14 days. So makikita po sa passport kung saan bansa po nang galing. So if, if within the last 14 days, the person, um, the foreign national came from Hong Kong, China or Macau, automatic po uh, we can deny this the, the, the entry of this person. At the same time po, nagpadala na rin po tayo ng advice sa airlines, hindi, um, pati po sa mga shipping agents to pre-screen the, the foreign nationals that are um, boarding their, their vessels to make sure na hindi na po makasakay at, at uh, itong mga foreign nationals na to, to para po maiwasan na kailangan pa natin silang ibalik. And pre-screening po really is uh, to the advantage of the the company dahil hindi na po nila kailangan ng added cost para ibalik pa po yung taong ito since automatic disqualified naman na po yan kapag ka pumasok sila sa bansa. 
Last na lang po kay Secretary Andenar. Sir, what do you say to criticisms na yung emergency meeting later ay uh, masyado ng late considering na last week pa po na na-report yung first death from coronavirus in the Philippines? No, it's not late. In fact, uh, very timely ang decision ng gobyerno. Again, uh, we follow also the the directives and also the um, uh, the recommendation from the World Health Organization uh, the Department of Health. Again, I would like to um, reiterate na itong namatay na, na infected by the end coronavirus uh, is a person from China. At yung infected din yung kanyang kasama. Wala pang Pilipino. Um, uh, thank God na, na infected nito. Uh, yung, uh, yung decision naman ng gobyerno ay uh, very uh, methodical. At yung uh, meeting mamaya ay nataon lang din uh, na timely because nung weekend namatay yung, uh, yung uh, pasyente na galing pan China uh, and unfortunately the first death outside China. Uh, sir, sino-sino yung mga kasama dun sa meeting and what uh, can the public expect dun sa outcome ng meeting na yun? Hindi ko masagot kung sino-sino because I was also just informed. Pero ang nakalagay doon, Pia, is a select number of uh, cabinet members. So, meaning hindi lahat. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Ace and then Mikhail. Uh, to our officials, uh, just curious because uh, the first death, our first uh, confirmed, the first death in the Philippines is the second confirmed case of NCOV. Tama po. Okay, but uh, when the DOH, when the government announced the first case of the NCOV, there was no mention of the 44-year-old Chinese man who is already suffering from the disease. May we know why uh, there was no announcement regarding the the second case of the NCOV? I was in the press con when Secretary Duque announced the death of the first case, and he did mention that the first case had a companion, a male companion, who was also sick. But at that time, the male companion was not as ill as uh, what happened in the subsequent days. So the illness progressed subsequently, which uh, eventually led to his demise. Ah, okay, so when he was ill, it was not yet in COVID. It was not yet a confirmed case that time. It, wasn't uh, it wasn't confirmed. The, okay. His confirmation came later. Ah, later. So it just deteriorated fast. Opo. Yeah, his condition deteriorated in the last 24 hours. Okay, do you have any information as to how many people have interacted or had interacted with the fatality? The, this, of course, will be the health personnel. Mm -hmm. Uh, attending to him and uh, the people perhaps who were exposed during their travels because they traveled to different places in the Philippines and that is now being investigated by the Epidemiology Bureau. Okay, thank you. Pa. Okay, Mikael, microphone please. I'll be about the mic. Hi. Good morning, Dr. Carlos. Mikael Flores of AFP News Agency. Ma'am, just to clarify on the timeline of the two confirmed cases, because DOH announced the first confirmed case on January 31, and then the first uh, mortality was announced yesterday. Um, why was there a uh, two-day gap between the confirmation of the cases? When did you actually confirm that the second confirmed case is NCOV? Because it turns out that the two are a couple from Wuhan. So why were they were they not tested at the same time? Uh, the first, the, the sample from the first confirmed case uh, was sent to Australia. And the sample from the second case was, uh, although sent just last Friday, we had the results done. We had the testing done already at RITM by, by the time. So um, the uh, the official results from the second case was sent out last Saturday, Saturday morning only. Uh, so the results of the first uh, confirmed case came earlier because that was sent to Australia. Mom, just to clarify, the second confirmed case was test was confirmed already by our, our ITM because we have the capability already. Yes. Mom, why why did our uh, why did the government not send both samples to Australia 
um, why did you just decide to send the sample of the first, con fir first case? We sent actually the sample to Australia of the second case mm -hmm. last Friday, and we're waiting for the results, which may probably come anytime soon. So uh, since we had the capability already for testing uh, Thursday last week, we decided, of course, to process the sample of the other uh, PUIs sent to us. And we had that result. And just to make sure that perhaps we were doing the right thing, we also processed in parallel the sample from the first confirmed case, which was positive, and we had the same results. So the staff was confident that our procedure was correct. Mom, can you give us an update of the, I think there, we have around 30, 436 PUIs and four uh, are undergoing testing. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give us an update if there are of the if the four uh, remaining uh, cases have turned out to be positive or negative, and do we have additional PUIs as of today? Uh, I don't know about the additional PUIs because that's the within the database of the Epi Bureau. The, the question should probably be answered by the Epi Bureau people. But as to the rest, so far with the results. Uh, sent to me for approval, there has been no positive results to date. Ma'am, uh, why did you after, not... After the second positive... Ma'am, just to clarify, you already knew uh, on Saturday that uh, there's a second confirmed case. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, why did you decide not to announce that on Saturday? And why did you announce it just yesterday? Well, we sent the results to our superiors and uh, it, it was the uh, decision above which... Uh, you know, they, it was them who decided when to call for the uh, announcement. But uh, that was late Saturday already, so perhaps there was not enough time to gather people to make the announcement on the same day. Ma'am, around what time did the patient, uh, was the patient pronounced dead? And was the confirmation before the, uh, before the patient died or after, after the patient expired? The confirmation came before. Be, came before. Ma'am, around what time namatay yung pasyente? If you, if you I am not aware of the exact uh, time of death. But uh, it was Saturday. It was Saturday. Uh, to uh, Ms. Dana, can you clarify on the Chinese who are currently in um, Naia? Uh, where did they come from and where exactly in uh, Naia are they currently held? This is collectively, so there's uh, they are not bunched up together in in one terminal. So um, I would have to get the details, kung saan saan sila galing, but most probably within um, the China and the uh, special administrative region. That's why they were caught in limbo and when and, and at the airports. But um, like I said earlier, um, the Chinese embassy has already coordinated this with our office. And um, is planning to send a, a special flights to fetch their um, nationals. Okay, thank you, Mikael. Uh, excuse me, late. Well, can we have uh, Albin Baltasar? Okay, it's a follow up question. Yes, please. Please use the microphone, please. Uh, regarding the passengers stranded in the airports, uh, I think it's not just Chinese yeah. is the, the the biggest number. Most, but yeah. with what would happen with the others? Most I think of there them are some Americans. Most of them were able to depart already. So right now it's mainly Chinese. Yes. The one most of the there. most of the ones who were stranded yesterday were able to depart already. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Alvin. Then Chana. Doctor Carlos, good morning, po. Doctor, here, ma'am. <laughs> Doctor, how, how can we assure the safety of uh, the patients, pati yung mga health workers na naka-assign sa San Lazaro Hospital? Pati na doon sa mga hospital na kung saan mayroong mga patients under observation. Uh, for San Lazaro and RITM, we have set standard procedures on infection prevention and control. And that covers a lot of things from uh, the wearing of the personal protective equipment, to handling of patients, to cleaning of rooms occupied by infected patients, and so on. So uh, we ha both of the hospitals have a long history of handling emerging infectious diseases. And so far, we have uh, been good. <laughs> the health workers have been, uh, uh, none, none of them so far 
have been infected. Doctor, dapat lang ba na magbigay tayo ng additional or recommend na magbigay ng additional hazard pa doon sa mga health workers na naka-assign sa mga patients? Uh, yeah, um, in addition to the previous answer, we also uh, request our health workers to monitor their temperature twice a day. Uh, and then uh, we quarantine them in case they develop any symptoms and uh, we, we manage the symptoms. Um, your question is about the hazard pay, I think. Additional that, uh, that would be good. <laughs> but uh, it's not within my power to determine uh, whether that should be given. But if, if that is recommended, I, I'm sure all of us will welcome that, especially from RITM and San Lazaro. Will you recommend them? Of course. <laughs> okay. Okay. Although we have a standard hazard pay in government, but there are people who are exposed to more hazards than others, but they receive the same remuneration. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin. Uh, um, just a point of clarification regarding uh, the earlier question about the 300 Chinese. The, the number does not just include those who are at the airports right now. It also includes the ones, the Chinese nationals who are in the country who want to um, go back to their homelands already. So it's not just the ones at the airports, but includes all those who are um, in the country who wants to go home now. I'm sorry? Not only in Manila. Okay, thank you. Chona, ma'am, any update on efforts of the government to track down uh, yung people who, who got contact dun sa one couple? The Epidemiology Bureau staff have the updated information. I'm sorry, I don't have the updated information. Okay. And ma'am, dun sa RITM, may mga test sample pa ba tayo na hinaantay from Melbourne, Australia? Wala. We sent three samples mm -hmm. uh, from three patients, so we're awaiting that. Mm -mm. And those samples are from people who came from China also? Wuhan? Yes, from China. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Okay, can we have our friend from? Yes, please state your name. Hi, uh, good morning. Joanna Balyaran from GG Press. Ma'am, uh, Dr. Carlos, my question is, uh, how do you ensure that passengers will follow self-quarantine procedures? Um, do you, does the government have like uh, a means to uh, monitor these passengers? Because unlike in other countries, they're stuck in one place for 14 days. So how do you ensure that they will follow self-quarantine procedures? Uh, we have personnel under the Epidemiology Bureau who uh, follow up this suspected, uh, this, uh, this personnel who are requested to do home quarantine. So they monitor uh, this personnel. Okay, Acer, and then Raymond, Julie, and? Um, Dr. Carlos. Um, uh, here. Uh, Dr. Carlos, just to clarify, um, we have our own uh, capacity to uh, detect if a uh, case is confirmed of NCOV here. But um, do we still have to send the sample to Australia before announcing that a patient is confirmed, even if we have our own ability to uh, confirm the test we, sample? Uh, I think I need to correct your statement. We announced, in fact, that there was a second positive even before we received the confirmatory test results because the sample from the second positive is still being run in Australia right now. So the secretary decided that this should be announced uh, because he's, he was maybe he was confident about our findings. So uh, just to clarify, we don't need to wait for the test to come back. No more, no more. Okay, thank you. Okay, can we have... Hi, I'm Yan from Phoenix TV Hong Kong. For Ms. Dana, um, does the travel ban also include um, Chinese citizens who may not be coming from China, Hong Kong, and Macau? Um, the ban specifically states that all foreign nationals who are coming from um, uh, China, Hong Kong, and Macau, so we, we implement the directive to the letter. So if, uh, for example, um, they are um, permanent residents of the United States, then they are not included. What if they're, um, sorry, Chinese citizens but not coming from um, China, Hong Kong, and Macau in the last 14 days? Yeah, but they are not included if they are not. Uh, they did not come from the, those three countries because um, what we are looking at is not the nationality, but where they came from. So since um, these are the areas that the um, Department of Health recommended that we implement the travel ban, the, the president um, 
said this directive, um, gave this directive to us, hence we implement it. So any foreign national, um, not just the Chinese, but all other nationalities, if um, they come from these areas of concern, then they will not be uh, allowed to enter the country. Thank you. Okay, my question, si Henry Uli, I think for doc Dr. Carlos. Uh, Ma'am, pwede po daw patanong sa ang hotel ang check-in, nag-check-in sa Manila yung Wuhan couple after they get back from Dugum Dumaguete and kumusta yung mga staff ng hotel na nakasalumuha, especially nung namatay na Chinese? Uh, I'm sorry, I do not have such information. Okay. The Epidemiology Bureau staff would have the information. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, last two, uh, Raymond and then, I mean, Julie. To Dr. Rabi. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, just your assessment on how the Philippine government, specifically the Department of Health, reacted when there was this announcement of outbreak of NCOV, and how is DOH now acting to prevent the spread of the virus? So, I believe that the Philippine government has been responding to an evolving situation. As I mentioned, this is a new situation, it's an evolving situation, and with the emergence of disease and the emergence of more information, uh, the government response has been proactively strengthened. Uh, we have been working very closely in guiding that response. Um, as new evidence emerges, as I explained earlier, and as WHO classified the event as a public health emergency, the Philippine government implemented more stringent measures. This is in relation to the relative risk and the pattern of movement of people. And so uh, we are satisfied so far with the measures being implemented by the government of the Philippines. And uh, we are continuing to work with them to increase their preparedness in case there are further importations or there is evidence of local transmission. As I mentioned earlier, at this point of time, there are no reports of any confirmed local transmission. Thank you very much, Dr. Rabi. Okay, uh, Julie? To Dr. Carlos, um, you said earlier that if patients or PUIs or those um, practicing self-quarantine should exhibit any symptoms, they should seek medical advice. Um, when they go to the hospitals, what, what kind of protocol should they expect or should they ask for? For example, should they go to directly to the clinics or to the ER? Paano pong mangyayari doon? Kasi syempre, pag pumili ka sa klinik ng doktor, mas marami ka pang pwedeng mahawa, di ba? Pag sa ER, ganun din naman. So, anong mga protocols po yung ipapatupad ng mga hospitals natin, particularly the private hospitals which are not under the government? Um, we, we have seen private hospitals initiating their own uh, measures to address this. Uh, in fact, there are private hospitals who establish separate triage areas okay. to evaluate patients consulting for possible and no, uh, novel coronavirus infection. I have seen tents, uh, tents erected in some private hospitals separate from their regular emergency rooms where these uh, patients who qualify under the the decision table can directly proceed. And they have dedicated personnel uh, to attend to these patients. So that probably is the first that the, the person who wishes to consult should know. Uh, they should ask where, if there are a specific place in the hospital or area where they will be evaluated. And that is the same practice in the Department of Health Hospitals. We have uh, special areas mm -hmm. for evaluating these cases. At least and for private hospitals, that's the very basic that they should do. They should okay. have a specific area to diagnose or to, to, evaluate. Yeah, to evaluate those yeah. patients. Yeah. Yes. And then, like, what kind of protocol should they expect? Bawa, kasi baka mamaya may bigla yung pasyente, bigla siyang i-sanitize ng bongga bongga ganun, or uh, protective gear, whatever. Uh -uh. Um, the DOH has released um, guidelines on preparedness and response for this particular organism, and that includes infection and prevention control guidelines. So hopefully that will be followed by everybody because that is supposed to be implemented by all hospital facilities. And uh, the instructions are quite clear on what to do and how to address the, the infection control issues. Okay. Our friend from? 
Um, hello, ma'am. Buena Bernal from Channel News Asia. Um, for our ITM, ma'am, um, since the um, contact tracing is crucial for um, the containment effort, and there was a nine-day nine-day window from the date of arrival of the uh, second confirmed case to the date that the contract uh, contact tracing was done. Um, can we know how long is the waiting period for the test results? It's forty-eight hours. And uh, for the <coughs> search capacity plan, ma'am. Can we know the timeline and how many subnational centers there are? There are currently five um, subnational laboratories uh, to be upgraded. And, um, well, we cannot just tell them to test tomorrow. <laughs> they have to be uh, equipped in terms of facilities, reagents, and to be trained on the protocol and to be given proficiency tests to assess whether they can perform the test properly. That's the only time that they will be allowed to do the actual sample testing. Is there an estimated timeline, ma'am, for when uh, they could do this? Well, this, we hope it can be done very soon. But we, we have already drawn the plans. And as I mentioned earlier, these were subnational labs uh, um, established to do influenza surveillance more about five years ago. So the basic... Uh, steps for PCR, which is the test, uh, polymerase chain reaction, have been taught to them. But there will be some adjustments for a specific protocol on novel coronavirus. Would you say that it's safe to say it's within this month or within the, the next few weeks? No. Very hard to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> and these five centers, ma'am, can, can we just know the, uh, where they are located? Uh, one is in Baguio General Hospital. Second is San Lazaro Hospital. Third is Lung Center, four is Vicente Soto Hospital in Cebu, and last is Southern Philippines Medical Center in Davao. Uh, last question, ma'am. Can we know the cost of the testing? Honestly, we have not costed it because we are doing it for free. But uh, when we tried to estimate uh, for our own information how much it will really uh, cost, my staff estimates it to be between 15, around 15,000 to 20,000. Okay, thank you. Last question. Um, so just a quick follow-up regarding the ban of entry. What happened with the passengers coming? Are you thinking, for example, there are a lot of flights coming from Europe to the Philippines. They do a short scale in Hong Kong, maybe one hour. The passengers just stayed at the airport. That passengers are also banned from entry to the Philippines. Okay. Regarding your uh, question earlier, how many were requested for repatriation? It, uh, formerly it was 40, it's now 42. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, media friends. Thank you to our guest, Secretary. Uh, uh, this is with regard to the question of Joanne. No? Joanne, you asked about um, uh, who will track down those uh, patients who are into self-quarantine. I believe that yesterday there was a discussion among the cabinet members in the cabinet thread, and Secretary Ed Anyo messaged this. So if, I, if you'd allow me to read it. Uh, for newly arrived Filipino citizens that do not manifest symptoms, a 14-day quarantine shall be imposed inside their homes. The Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams shall account and monitor concerned individuals daily taking, temperature, etc., et until the end of the quarantine period. If anyone would show any symptom of N coronavirus, the barangay officials will coordinate with DOF slash IATF for the immediate transfer of the patient to the hospital for treatment and isolation. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Martin. Dr. Rabi. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate, as I mentioned earlier, that WHO remains confident that this coronavirus outbreak can be controlled. We need the public to act rationally. WHO has provided guidelines. It is important that we don't panic unnecessarily. It's important that we maintain hand hygiene by regularly washing hands with soap and water, not touching our mouth, nose and ears. If you have signs of respiratory infection, to wear a mask to protect other people, 
practice cough etiquette, maintain at least one meter distance from your nearest uh, neighbors if you have a respiratory infection, and uh, practice cough etiquette so that droplets are not spread. Uh, ensure that all meat are properly cooked. By doing these, we are confident that based on current available evidence, this outbreak of 2019 novel coronavirus can be controlled successfully, as we have done previously with SARS and MERS. So our message is not to panic, but to act rationally and carefully. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Rabi. Dr. Carlos? Um, my message is, at the moment, there is no community transmission yet of the novel coronavirus in the Philippines. We are at the containment stage, which means uh, we are trying to prevent the virus from spreading to the community by identifying cases who can possibly have been infected. And since these are mostly from China and the special administrative regions, we encourage uh, travelers who have been exposed or had traveled to those areas to please, uh, if requested to be home quarantined, to follow exactly the instructions. Uh, isolate themselves in a room, wear a ma face mask, uh, take your temperature twice a day. If you start experiencing symptoms, report to the hospital authorities for evaluation. Uh, we do not want family members of the returning uh, travelers to be infected because one family member who becomes infected can, as I showed in my slides, infect two or more. So 2.4 is the reproduction rate, so it can double the number of patients. If we all follow that and we practice respiratory toilet, uh, cough etiquette, uh, proper disposal of waste, do not just uh, dispose waste anywhere. I think we are confident uh, that we can uh, remain at the stage of containment instead of progressing to mitigation. Second, let us reserve our masks to those who need them. Uh, I have seen many people wearing masks and uh, please think of whether uh, this mask, use of these masks are indicated because now there is a current shortage of this uh, valuable commodity and let us give them to those who need them most, especially the health workers. And then uh, from the DOH, at least for, for our ITM, we are trying to do our share in uh, identifying these cases and confirming through testing who are really infected and who are not, so that people who are uh, uh, test negative can be discharged from the hospital as soon as possible. We have released hotlines to the different agencies of, uh, um, to the different hospitals so that they can uh, follow the results of the test as soon as possible. And uh, in the near future, we hope to establish more infectious disease specialty centers so that uh, the expertise in infectious disease will be present not only in Metro Manila, but in other regions of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carlos. Yusa Cabellia. Uh, the DFA continues to ensure the protection of uh, uh, nationals abroad and also to ensure the uh, well-being of, uh, of the d domestic uh, public. Also regarding questions about the repatriation timeline, uh, we need to remind ourselves that repatriation is subject to Chinese government's laws, including immigration and quarantine clearances. So uh, it's not just a unilateral move. Thank you. Okay, spokes. Good morning. Uh, the Bureau of Immigration urges everyone to refrain from unnecessary travel. Kung hindi po importante ang biyahe ninyo at hindi po kailangan kailangan, mas maigi po that we delay it, we postpone it until everything gets sorted out. Um, please bear with us as we are implementing measures ad ad as advised by the Department of Health. Who knows what is best for us to fight this virus? Um, let us also follow, sundin po natin ang maigi, the recommendations of the Department of Health um, on, on sanitation, on hygiene, on how to protect ourselves um, because this is for everyone's safety. Thank you very much. Okay, Secretary Andanar. Thank you to our uh, guest today, Yusek Ernie Abelia, 
uh, spokesperson Dana Sandoval, Dr. Celia Carlos, and um, from the WHO, our representative here in the Philippines, uh, Dr. Rabi Abe Yasing. Thank you so much for uh, taking time to provide vital information to the public. Uh, I advise the public also to continue to uh, monitor the news from uh, the private uh, network companies that we have here. Uh, also, uh, Presidential Communications Operations Office, we have a logging Handa PH page where you can uh, uh, continuously uh, monitor uh, the situation on this uh, N-Corona virus. And for those who are also watching in the regions, in Region 10, uh, Northern Mindanao, I will be there to also uh, convene a, a special or emergency uh, briefing about the end coronavirus so that uh, we can ensure our Kababayans in Region 10 that uh, the government is on top of the situation. Reminding the public also that we have uh, an emergency meeting later with the President around 5 o'clock or 5.30 in the afternoon and this will be open to the media afterwards. Thank you so much, uh, Yusek Rocky. Back to you. Yes. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, media friends. Back to our main studio.